After rescuing Initiate Peck, we can head to the far east side of the Falls Church area and discover the LOB Enterprises building. Outside we see a small seating area with a box of cram, and sitting on the shelving units is one jet inhaler, a blood bag, and a single Myalurk cake. In front of the building we see the address 18527 Fairford, and just below that is the word entrance. Let's go inside. As soon as we do, we hear the quiet whirring of a sentry bot. To the right we see another one, but instead of fighting, it simply flies past. It appears to have travelled somewhere down the corridor, but eventually it does return. Near the receptionist's desk we find a skeleton, and next to that a stack of pre-war money. A stone's throw away from the bony remains is a bottle of Radex stashed inside a wooden crate, and atop the desk is a working computer. Selecting the LOB Enterprise's front desk terminal brings up a selection of messages, as well as a greeting for the user. Welcome Miss Waring, please remember to ask for ID and greet visitors with a smile. Below that we can browse through the other messages, the first being an emergency protocol to all personnel. It reads, As standard policy all employees are required to carry low grade military class weaponry at all times. In the event of a hostile takeover, your desk can be used as a makeshift barricade. Position the desk between yourself and your opponent, then crouch behind the desk while firing any weapon approved on form B-43-2. Note, cafeteria privileges will be suspended in the event of a hostile takeover. Next we have an email titled, Weapon Practice Tonight. The email is from Derek McCoy, and is to be received by everyone working under LOB Enterprises. If anyone would like to practice with their low grade military class, company issue, Sam and I will be shooting rounds off in the yard at 7pm, BYOB which I think stands for Bring Your Own Bullets. Then we have an email sent from the receptionist titled, Man the Doors. Oh, they're here. Man the Doors. The feds are here. And lastly, another email to all personnel titled, Caps in Emails, from the Director of Human Resources. I would like to remind everyone that, despite the impeding federal invasion, standard company policy is still in effect. Specifically, do not write emails in all caps. This style is offensive to your co-workers. Thank you for your cooperation. So, the employees of LOB Enterprises were issued military grade weapons, given optional shooting lessons, informed of how to use their desk as cover during a firefight, and had a very negative opinion towards the local police. Also, using all caps for an email is very offensive, even during an invasion. Something suspicious was going on at this company. Let's see if we can find out what. We have three ways we can go. To the right is a sign for the restroom, so let's search here first. Inside the ladies we find 18 railway spikes, another skeleton, and a first aid box. In the gents we find a jar of buff out in a cooking pot, and not much else. Back at reception we can head across the room to a corridor. Turning right brings us to a patrolling sentry bot. Farther along is a room with several skeletons, we'll come back to this. For now let's only search the rooms on the outer walls, and work our way inwards. First we find a storage room. On the shelves are a pack of darts, some first aid, and a pugilism illustrated magazine. The next available room to our right is a large office. Judging by the amount of floor space, I would say this employee was very important. To the southern wall are a few pieces of packaged food, and two crates of pre-war money. The terminal on the desk does work, but there's nothing new to read. Exiting the office and turning the corner, we encounter a Protectron, which makes a nice change from the missile-toting sentry bots. The final door on the right hand side leads to a whole other area with a bottle of Nuka Cola Quantum off in the distance. Let's turn around and begin again, this time searching the rooms to our left. 
The first room has a number of desks to search through, a singing radio, and access to the higher level via broken floor. Ascending the pile of rubble and quickly scanning the area reveals no other ways forward and shouldn't confuse our methodical search. With that in mind, we navigate around the room, finding a skeleton hugging a first aid box and four grenades. On the desk in front of the skeleton is a small collection of cherry bombs and another terminal with the same messages as before. On the other side, there is a terminal that could easily be missed. The texture appears to be the same as a broken terminal but it can be selected. Welcome Mr. Johnson. Please refrain from making inappropriate comments and actions towards the female employees. As is company policy, this reminder will remain on screen for as long as human resources deems necessary. The first message we have already seen, but the next is brand new. Memo, sexual harassment charge. From the Director of Human Resources to Samuel Johnson. Mr. Johnson, I would like to remind you that company policy forbids any form of harassment between employees, sexual or otherwise. Specifically, you will refrain from greeting any female employee with the phrase, Hey doll, want to see if this is a grenade in my pocket, or if I'm just happy to see ya. This statement is not only offensive and inappropriate, but could be considered a misuse of company-issued grenades. Oh boy. It's only a matter of time before a grenade goes off and makes a huge mess. It would be much safer to just get rid of Johnson and his Johnson. The next unique memo is responding to federal raids. Internal memorandum. Due to the increased awareness of our upcoming project milestone, you and your fellow employees may be required to initiate emergency defensive procedures, as outlined in the employee handbook. If required, please review the following policies. Your continued adherence to company policy is appreciated. So there was a project milestone which could result in increased hostility. But why? What was this project and why would it have the risk of added danger? Across the gap and through the broken wall, we see a skeleton next to a 10mm pistol and an ammo crate. That's it for this upper section, so let's head back down and continue searching the inner rooms. The next one we come across is some kind of cafeteria, with several skeletons strewn across the floors and tables. On one of the tables is a 10mm submachine gun and its respective ammunition. There's a Nuka-Cola machine, refrigerator, first aid box, and an Eatertronic 3000. Inside are a rare box of sugar bombs, don't mind if I do. Around the corner is a small maintenance cupboard. By grabbing the cooking pot on the shelf and tipping it over, we reveal two hidden frag grenades. There isn't anything else here, or in the small janitor's closet just around the corner. Past the body of the Protectron, we can turn left and search a Nuka-Cola vending machine for three originals and one Quantum. There's also a door leading downstairs to the LOB Enterprises archives which we will save for later since we want to clear the building one area at a time. And the last of the inner doors takes us to the room with the collapsed ceiling. On this side of the rubble is a desk with two syringes of Medex and nothing more. Now, let's take a look at the room with the far off bottle of Quantum, but not before dealing with the building's security. There's another set of stairs leading down, the glowing drink, more skeletons, and another sentry. The desks and filing cabinets have your usual office junk, but there is a fridge we can loot for some food and some chems just beside that. There's also a hole in the floor. Looking down we see a gas leak, we're lucky that hasn't gone off yet. We can most likely take the stairs to get down there, but for now let's finish looting this floor. Beside a ham radio are some 5.56mm bullets, and on the table near the stairs is a working terminal with, you guessed it, the same email. There's also a inhaler filled with jet inside a bucket on the nearby shelf. Heading down these stairs and into the gas leak, we see a skeleton next to a laser rifle and an average locked ammo crate. Inside are 54 energy cells. At the far right corner we find a door leading to the LOB Enterprises archives. I'm pretty sure this will lead back to the other door under the same name. Like I said before, there's still more to search here. 
So let's finish that before entering a new part of the building. Back up and into this small corridor on the southwest side, we find an exit sign above a door, but the exit here has collapsed. There is a skeleton next to a laser pistol and another locked box. This time it's easy and inside are 60 energy cells. Back up, we can head into the corridor and turn right to find a set of stairs. Heading up leads to a blocked path on our left and an elevated door to the right. We can loot the blockade for some magnum ammo, which is always nice to find, and then see where this elevator leads. To LOB Enterprise's East Wing. So we have two doors connected to one another through the archives, and an elevator going to the East Wing. The only section of this area left to explore is the upstairs at the main entrance. So let's head there. On the right side we see a whole wall of shelves, with the only noteworthy thing being scrap metal. The end of this corridor seems to be blocked, but we can climb it and look through to the other side. It's the elevator doors. We were just over there a moment ago. On the other side of the corridor are a few pieces of pre-war food and another terminal with the same repetitive message. Now we have a choice. We can backtrack through to the elevator and clear the east wing, or we can go through one of the doors leading to the archives and see if there's anything regarding this company and what they were doing before the Great War. I know which sounds more interesting. As soon as we enter the archives, we encounter a sentry bot. With no other signs of being interrupted, we can peacefully search the room. A whole lot of nothing until reaching a large desk. On top, we can pick up a Chinese Army Spec Ops training manual. Were these employees working for the Chinese? That would explain the weapons, the defense protocol, and the reason the police were invading. The terminal is the same as the others, and that's it for here. There's a door leading west through a short passageway, and on the other side we run into a trio of sentry bots. There's another one blurring the usual warnings, but it's coming from above so unless he comes down to get me, it should be safe to explore. We see a skeleton wielding a 10mm submachine gun and a couple of ammo packs nearby. Along the northern wall are some explosive crates and two weapon cabinets, but the weapons themselves aren't anything special. At the south we find a door leading to a small break room and just around the corner, another sentry. The break room has what you would expect, vending machines, food, drink, first aid, but a locked safe, especially one of this size, just feels out of place. Inside we find caps, ammo, a laser pistol, and a stealth boy. Not the items a typical break room would include, but as we're coming to learn, this is no ordinary company. So far there have been many skeletons, all wielding various weapons. There's nothing indicating as to whether they were a former employee, or were one of the invading police officers and I think that no matter how close we look, we aren't going to find one. I believe that the robots found patrolling the building are the police. In a world where most families have a robotic butler that can cut hair, tell jokes, and dispense clean drinking water on a weekly basis, it makes much more sense that the police would have even more sophisticated and advanced robots than the public. By sending in robots, they minimize or completely erase any chance of human casualty, at least to their own, that is. Now as to why the police invaded, that is a question left unanswered. Around the corner are two restrooms, both empty other than the cherry bombs in the gents' toilet. That can't have been easy. After looting the robot, we can head through the door at the end of the passage and enter a utility room. Let's attempt to deactivate the sentry at the far left corner. So close. On the nearby shelves is another stealth boy, first aid box, and a lot of the items needed to craft the makeshift weapons. On the other side, resting on a shelf, is an easy locked first aid kit. There's nowhere else to go on this level, so let's backtrack and head up the stairs. Another gas leak, more junk, and the door leading back into the main building. 
With the archives complete, the only place left to explore is the East Wing, so let's head over to the elevator and check it out. Taking the elevator brings us to a more corporate area. At least that's what it feels like. Posters, lots of space, and a secondary receptionist area. The receptionist is long gone and has been replaced by the hard-working teddy bear. The terminal here finally has something new to read. Security system login. Viewing the security feed doesn't work as there's no source detected. Bring security turrets online. Turret sentries active. Saved feed still, 8.14am. Image unavailable. Saved feed still, 8.21am. Image unavailable. Well, that's a shame. Saved memo. Attention. Security Captain. Mr. Humbert. I'm informed that federal investigators are interrogating Miss Johansson in the main lobby. Please enact security protocol C688 as outlined in your security handbook, Addendum 4. So the receptionist was taken alive and was being interrogated. I'm not sure what the protocol was, but I imagine it was some form of lockdown or defense type command that the employees would respond to. The internal memorandum we have already seen on Johnson's terminal. Next is weapons policy, which we also have already seen. Evacuation policy T01. In the event of emergency evacuation scenario F1A, all executive staff not under penalty are to be evacuated from the building via the archives and connected civic tunnels. That's strange. We were just in the archives, and we didn't see any door or manhole leading to any tunnels. Perhaps it was purposefully blocked off, or the entrance has been lost over time, as the building has become more unstable. All the other personnel will remain behind to safeguard active projects from imminent federal inquiry. All employees are tasked with barricading the main doors, and will be further tasked with keeping the building secure until 5pm or until the Chief of Security enacts Protocol T81. The usual lunch break will be suspended for that day. Sounds about right. The big wigs evacuate while the little guys hold down the fort. Inclement Weather Policy C31. In the event of extreme winter, nuclear, conditions, all employees are required to proceed to human resources and complete a whole bunch of forms, because that's the first thing on your mind when the bombs start dropping. Paperwork. In accordance with company policy, employees will be issued iodine tablets, personal Geiger counter, meal rations, and sworn into the sovereign LOB Republic. Each of these things makes sense, but the LOB Republic? What is that? We found a Chinese training manual, and China does go by the People's Republic of China, so perhaps this company was working with the Chinese. Let's dig a little deeper and see what else we can find. To the right is one of the more devastated rooms, with most of the walls and floors missing. To the northeast corner we see a sentry bot, let's go ahead and take care of that. Nothing on this floor beside a door leading up, where we find another sentry across the room. There's also a gutsy, but I decided to leave it be and hop down to search the rest of the area. Back in the corridor and heading west, we hear the overlapping sounds of several robots. Luckily, they're somewhere above. The main way through the corridor is blocked by filing cabinets, typewriters, and pieces of collapsed rubble. To the right, we meet a robotic baddie. With that done, we see another terminal with the same messages as before some bobby pins in the cabinet, a nuka cola in the vending machine, pre-war food in the fridge, and a first aid box. Exiting this door brings us to the other side of the blockade and we see two skeletons collapsed into the corner. They must have been in the process of creating a barricade when they were taken out by the robots. Beside them is a 10mm submachine gun and the required ammunition. Beneath the weapon is the rarely named armor case, concealing a lone combat armor. Crossing the hallway, we enter a restroom with the wall missing, which brings us back into the room with the overlapping voices. On the east wall is a box resting atop a shelving unit, inside are some shotgun shells, and a bag of Radaway. In the cabinet beside the desk is a rare scoped 44 Magnum, 
which I'll gladly take. The terminal holds nothing new, and as I head back into the restroom to search the toilets, we hear... There's a chance that this could be the gutsy we saw earlier. If so, that's one less robot to deal with. With nothing in the restroom, we can head left to the end of the corridor. To the right is blocked, so we have to go left and head up the stairs. This brings us to the final corridor of the area, with several rooms breaking off. The next available door to our right has caved in, and the one after that is locked with a very hard skill check. I could pick this, but let's see where the other side takes us first. In the leftmost office, we find two pre-war books on a desk and a R&D operations terminal. It too has a very hard lock. Inside are two sections, lab reports and company policies. Selecting the lab reports shows us the title, Project Zoo Rong Prototype Lab Reports. Report 363. Experimental prototype makes extensive use of hardware common to liquid ammunition flame projection weapons. That's a mouthful. While initial test results were impressive, extreme weight of unit, 118.3 kilograms, and fume inhalation rendered most test subjects incapable of firing the unit or remaining conscious under typical field conditions. Report 375. Prototype introduces Proprietary ammunition type, conventional 10mm shells house a caplet containing amalgamating agents. When the caplet was broken in a lab test, localized fire burst and shrapnel projection met requirements for project. However, in field tests, amalgam caplet ammunition proved too fragile, and several detonated from excessive vibration or walking speed. Report 401 Prototype attempts to refine results of Acumis coating within the weapon barrel. Initial tests showed promise, as predicted, delivery friction superheats projectile as it is delivered from the weapon, and conventional 10mm ammunition can be used. However, during live fire testing, subjects firing the weapon in rapid succession suffered severe burns to the fingers and palm, and report 418. Prototype refines Acumist barrel experiments by addition of retardant jacketing, as well as internal heat diffusers. Rate of fire diminished from unmodified version of weapon. Conventional 10mm ammunition does not fully liquefy until impact, giving the 418 exceptional accuracy compared to earlier prototypes. Live fire tests report no major casualties. Recommend ZRIN 418 as project candidate. So, LOB Enterprises was either an American company working for the Chinese, or the Chinese pretending to be an American company. Either way, they were experimenting with incendiary ammunition, and after many failed attempts, or progress as some would call it, they finally had a prototype worth creating en masse. But the Great War put a rather swift and abrupt end to that. Also, the local government had either a suspicion or intelligence pointing towards this, and that is why they were clearing the building before the bombs fell. The company anticipated the raid and prepared its employees with military-grade weapons to fight back against the invading forces. We still don't know if the police were human or robotic, but the employees certainly didn't survive. Everything under company policies we have already gone through, so exiting this room and turning left, we enter the room with a destroyed sentry. This is the very same that we saw from across the room. All we find here are a pack of darts, and the only Chinese weapon so far. Heading into the room with the missing floor, we can turn right, and appear on the other side of the blockade. Before going through the door here, we can turn left, and use the small pieces of remaining floor to get a closer look for anything valuable. 40 microfusion cells, a frag grenade, a psycho injector, nothing amazing, but it is something. Back at the blockade, we have the only door left to go through, excluding the very hard lock door on the other side. Here we can take out the overlapping voices that we've been hearing so much of. And now we can search the CEO's reception and office. 
Once again, we find a terminal with nothing more than the emergency protocol. I will not be missing these. The CEO appears to have been taken out by the hostile robots, which does give some reason to believe that they were with the police. Or, more likely, were the police. On the terminal, we find a saved invoice and the repetitive company policies. The invoice shows that a company called Happy Liberty Imports was used. This company was a pre-war business that was just one of the many fronts used by the Chinese government. The company conducted espionage activities such as delivering specialized shipments to operatives masquerading as Americans. So LOB was a Chinese company, cloaked as an American company, experimenting with incendiary ammunition and a weapon capable of safely discharging it. This secret was eventually discovered by the American government, who then cleared the building of any Chinese spies. The invoice states that the delivery should be handled directly to the CEO and not left with the receptionist. If we search the desk, we can find the key needed to unlock the secure case. Inside are 21 10mm rounds and the Zhu Rong V41-8 Chinese pistol. It is essentially a unique variant of the Chinese pistol. It shoots a little slower, but to account for that, the pistol expels a flaming bullet that will burn the target for 5 seconds. This weapon could be a lot of fun at lower levels, but towards the game's level cap of 30, it's nothing more than a novelty weapon. Also, the weapon apparently shares its name with a Chinese god of fire, which seems very fitting. The last piece of loot in the CEO's office are a laser pistol and some microfusion cells. In the private bathroom is a first aid box and a sneakily hidden mini nuke resting atop the light fixture. And there we have it, the traitorous LOB Enterprises and the Zhu Rong V418 Chinese pistol. If you enjoyed today's video, then consider leaving a comment, liking the video, sharing it with a friend, subscribing to see more and enabling notifications to avoid missing any activity. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next adventure.